Hi, welcome to Dead End Street. I'm Al. Um, we're here today to do a quick little uh, tribute to the late, great Jordy Walker, the guitarist for Killing Joke, who uh, uh, passed away two days ago. Um, the news circulated very quickly. Um, the tributes came out all over from everyone in the music community and um i am someone who was very very um inspired and influenced by his guitar playing um big killing joke fan so i figured what we could do here is do a instead of doing an album ranking of killing joke which would be a pretty big undertaking to do pretty that quickly um i thought it'd be a pretty good thing to celebrate what Jordy did best, and that was his riffs. So we figured uh, maybe we'll do a top 10 um, killing joke riffs by the late, great Jordy Walker. So I guess let's get started. So at number 10, I have uh, The Weight from 1980s Killing Joke, the debut album. It's one of those songs that's impossible to drive the speed limit to. Um, it's just got a great drive to it. It's jittery and violent, and it's even better live than it is on the record. Um, that, thanks to that butchering of it at the hands of Metallica. Oh, <laughs> my God, why? It should never happen. Number nine is The Fall of Because from the 1981 released What's This For, the second Killing Joke album. Um, it really just kind of sounds like a death march. It may even be the riff that invented industrial music, for better or for worse, however how you feel about that. The song is surely to blame. Uh, imitated but never re replicated. Uh, it's a song that only Killing Joke could do and pull off. Number eight is Birds of a Feather, a 1982 non-album single. Um, this riff kind of gives off a demented Mark Bolin type vibe, type vibe, um, because of a weird glam rock stomp to it, but it's just um, almost kind of like Telegram Sam meets the Exorcist or something, <laughs> but it's great stuff. Uh, number seven is... Habazon from the 1985 release, Nighttime. Um, Start off with your harmonics and non-harmonious chord sequences throughout make this a truly infectious riff. Uh, Raven and Paul on bass and drums are absolutely killing it here on here. This one too, monstrous. Number six is The Gathering. From 1983's Fire Dances. Um, the lead of Truck and Fire Dances sounds like um, Adam and Nance at the gates of hell. <laughs> but really, no one else could have concocted this riff majority. It's an absolute classic, great riff. Number five is Love Like Blood from 1985's Nighttime. So, Love Like Blood was a song that. Um, kind of divided the Killing Joke faithful for a while there upon its release, which seems kind of silly now because it's almost um, synonymous with Killing Joke at this point. Um, it seems tailor-made for the dance floor, but that doesn't mean it's not a cruddy riff. Um, one could say Motley Crue stole it for their Dr. Feelgood song a couple years later, um, but it didn't have that magic. Well, because, well, Motley Crue. <laughs> um, number four is Frenzy from 1983's Fire Dances. So dissonant and eerie. It almost doesn't sound musical until it does. It's got a totally hypnotizing feel to it throughout the entire song. Number three is 80s from 1985's Nighttime. Uh, so this is probably the most recognizable Killing Joke song and riff. 
um, might quite possibly because Nirvana shamelessly borrowed it for Come As You Are, or possibly because of its uh, inclusion on the Weird Science soundtrack, if you can imagine that. Uh, great movie, though. Great. But as uh, good as the intro riff is, it's not even the highlight of the song. The highlight of the song is when Jordy is detuning the E string every eight bars at the end of the frame with a din, 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 din. you know. I mean, back in 1985, you couldn't loop that. So he had to tune it and retune it about 40 times over and over and over again. Um, very committed to that sound for that song. It, it works amazingly. So off-putting. And the bridge riff is pretty excellent also. And number two, we have The Pandies Are Coming from 1982's um, Revelations record. Um, I haven't the slightest idea of what Jordy's doing to this poor guitar in this song. Um, I wouldn't begin to even try to figure out how to play it. I've never had. Um, I just don't I don't I have no idea what he could possibly be doing. Um, it's one of the most terrifying things I've ever heard coming out of a musical instrument. Uh, it's absolutely awesome. I love it. And the number one Jordy Walker riff to me is 1984's nine album single, A New Day. Um, so it was released during that sweet spot in between Fire Dances and um, Nighttime. So in 1984, in between the two records, um, it has all of Jordy's hallmarks, all in one song: the disturbing flanger, the sparkling chorus, the distant reverb, the punchy, overdriven distortion, and that tone. That tone. That's I mean, when I think of Jody Jordy Walker's guitar playing, I just think tone. When he starts playing, it's absolutely him. You know it's him playing. It doesn't sound like anyone else. And that is not something that anybody um, that not very many people can pull off. Having your own sound. Knowing it's you two seconds into your playing. Um, the very deliberate picking in the song and that slide that he does at the three minute and 16 second mark of the song is pure magic. Pure magic. Magic that is Jordy Walker. Well, um, next time I guess we'll be together on a more of a positive note, but this is a positive note. I mean, we're celebrating Jordy and everything that he's left us. And um, I'll be listening to The Killing Joke forever. So um hope you will too. If you have any comments, leave them in there. If you think there's any riffs that I should have included, let's talk about it. Let me know. I'd love to talk about it. Um, so until next time, um, I think our next one, I think is finally going to be that poll album ranking and i think before, after that we might do something holiday oriented we'll see but until then thanks a lot thanks for joining us here on dead Edge street